appointment. So that is the first one. Now the second one is the second, you know, point is the relevance of the Council of State. You know, the relevance of the Council of State. And that comes from the I think the third paragraph of the Council of State letter. From from, from the letter, Council of State seems to be saying that well, when such appointments are being made in our under two seventy and their advice is required, what they would do is to solely look at the documents that the president has presented to them, that is a qualification, or in other words, C V and they said it they stated it in the in the letter. C V. Now when they look at the C V, they check if the person the information on the C V makes the person fit, I mean, uh, the qualification, as in the, uh, and, and here, from the tone of the letter and the context of the paragraph, and even in the light of the petition, they simply are going to look at the CV, your educational background, the places you've worked before, and all that, only the information you have, the person has presented to them, and then they will advise if the, per the person satisfies the, and by CV, I mean the objective criteria, right? So, in assessing people for qualification or for positions, there are two things that, two main criteria that is considered. We have the objective one, and then the second one, which I would like to call the subjective one. Okay. The objective ones are usually the ones that, so for example, for an MP, we say that, well, you have to, between one year, you have to be a member of, or a, what, you, you must be resident in the constituency, you know, those are objective ones. Anyone can just find out. If we come to the president, we know that you must be at least 40 years, and then those ones are just objective. But the subjective ones, I mean, I mean if it's a judge, they will say you should have been so called 10 years at the bar, and those ones you can just calculate. But there is an, a, a subjective component of such assessment. And the subjective components are moral standing, conflict of interest issues. You know, those things that are sometimes even more important than the objective ones, right? So what the letter seems to be saying is that they will just look at the objective ones, and once the person checks or ticks the boxes for the objective ones, they will, ask, they will recommend the person to the president to, you know, to consider. Now, that is a very uh, significant and a very dangerous position to, to, no, to, to take. If you are going to just look at the paper qualifications. Now, let's look at the, the third thing that we need to, to look at, which also dovetails into the previous point that I've made about the criteria or the, 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 the appointment criteria and advice that the Council of State may give. Is the fact that the office that the person is going to occupy. Now, let's, let's look at the office that the electoral commissioner, I mean, the, the, the Dr. Akiahini, is going to offer. It's going to be a member of the electoral commission. Now, electoral commission is responsible for conducting elections, you know, in Ghana. And one fundamental, I mean, there are three fundamental tests for conducting an election. An election must be free, it must be fair, and it must be what? Transparent. And above everything, the electoral commission itself must be independent. So when you put all these together, it appears the premise of the Constitution, uh, Constitution are telling us something, that for persons who occupy those offices, they need to be persons who are capable of being independent of the competing interests in the election. They need to be persons who act freely so that the election itself must be free. They need to be persons who are capable of being fair. And when it comes to fairness, there's one thing that everyone seems to know in this country. It must not just be fair, it must be seen to be what? To be fair. The process of elections is not enough to say that, well, I will be fair. It is also important to make sure that people who are interested in the election will fool and see the election to be fair. Now, would the election be fair? If, for example, a former party chairman of, let's say, let's say uh, Chairman Ampofi, is appointed as the electoral commission, a, a member of the electoral commission. The point is that 
if he takes him an ample fool for it, he definitely is qualified to be an MP and he was a former. So it means that he will meet the objective criteria. But the subjective element, which is also as important as the objective one, is whether Chairman Ampofu would be fair in running an election which involves NDC and what? NPP. Do you see the point? And I think that is why we need to look at the code of conduct of the Electoral Commission itself. Some level of officials or the top level officials are supposed to be what? To, 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 to not be openly, of course, everyone has a vote and everyone is entitled to vote. Indeed, everyone is entitled to play politics and be part of, you know, uh, it's, it's a right to, to, to be in politics. But while exercising that right, the question is would the subjective element of, 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 of qualification, would it override the relevance of the office? So I was expecting that. The Council of States, even granted, you see, when we are building these institutions, okay, what we are doing is that we are setting precedence every, with every decision and every action that we take. We are setting precedence, okay? So this letter, for instance, is a major precedent for future members of the Council of States or the future composition of the Council of States to refer to just as courts do it, just as parliament does it, just, just as every institution of states will say that well, when this issue came up in the previous time, in the previous time, this is what the council had. So, I, I mean, the new council should be able to what, go in accordance with that, unless it has a very good reason to, 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 to depart. So this letter is kind of a precedent that whenever someone is taken to council of states for, uh, you know, for recommendation, for advice to the president, it is, this letter is evidence that the, the council will only look at the TV that is presented. And once they see what is on the TV to be compatible with the office, that is the objective test, they will not bother to go into the subjective test of, of, of what, what is before the, or, I mean, of, of, that, of, of the uh, eligibility or the criteria for appointment. So this is, this is a classic precedent for that. Now, let me make this point. It is not the case Gunners that gold. if you want to was a member of, if you were uh, a, a member of a political party, you cannot occupy, you know, public office. That is not the point being made here, because we know that even to be a judge, you you cannot be disqualified merely because you were a member of a political party. To be uh, a speaker of parliament, for instance, yeah, the speaker of parliament is supposed to be impartial, but it does not mean that you cannot be a, a, a member of a political party. So, being a member of a political party itself. It's not a disqualifying, you know, criteria for for such appointment. However, it is the conduct of the person, you know, in respect of the activity that will raise the issue. And I think that is what the NDC petition is is, is about. The NDC petition was put. I mean, there were attachment indicating various instances where some of these appointees have gone beyond what you know uh, 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 um, ordinary members of political parties do to the point of sometimes even taking some, you know, emotive positions against some of the previous political parties, I mean, the, the political parties in, 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 in Ghana. So, I think the issue goes beyond the simplistic way of saying that, well, are you saying that a, a person who is a member of a political party cannot become a, a, an electoral commissioner? That is not the point. It is the nature of how the person conducted himself, even as a politician. Those are the things that we would be, we would be, uh, I mean, need, needed to be uh, discussed. Now, let's come back again to the Council of States. I appreciate the difficulty that the Council of States faces in even some of these things that, I mean, the advice they give to, to, to the president, in respect of logistics, in respect of capacity, and in respect of all the other things that you will need to confirm the subjective criteria. So, for example, I am not sure if the Council of States has any facility for going beyond the the the, uh, the CV of, of of I mean the document that the president presents them for consideration, but it should be it should be and it must be part of their their, their job to, to find go. such a facility or uh, to rely on other equally important state agencies to confirm some of this. But to say that we are not interested in the subjective part because the council of states works or its function is if you look critically for its history of formation and even what is in the constitution. 
they are actually supposed to advise the president on the top subjective side of things. Their job is not to, you know, if you look at the history, the Council of States is like an advisory, it, 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 it's a mimicking, you know, it, it, it mimics what we have in our traditional setting as the elders, you know, the Council of Elders for a chief. And their job is to call the president and say that, well, even though you have the power to do ABCD, which the Constitution has dealt with clearly and cannot be questioned, and even a court can confirm, we are looking at the softer side of things. We are looking at the political side of things, the things that will unite the country, the things that will give confidence in the democracy we are running. It is that kind of mature, you know, uh, deep, elderly advice that we are supposed to do. So that is why it came to me as a surprise that they would rather say that they, 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 from the letter they, are, they, they only looked at the CV. And it's as if that element of the, the, the main purpose of the Council of State, which is advice me, which is to draw the president's attention to very soft matters on, on his power, seems to be completely missing in, in the letter. And, and that gives me some challenges. Now, the Council of State, State needs to begin to look at their capacity and they have what it takes to enhance their capacity. So, for example, we have national security, we have uh, uh, all these institutions, police, which the Council of State will rely on for some background checks and information. It's a different thing if the Council of State says, well, we have done this check and we have found that this person, but we don't think it's a problem. So, for example, Council of State can say that, well, we have received your letter. We have gone through the processes of investigation. We have looked at all the soft and subjective issues of, 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 of concern. Now, what we want to do, but, but we don't see, we don't think that these issues that you have raised are enough to disqualify a person or to give us the power to give a negative advice to the president on this. That would have been more encouraging. Then what it means is that the Council of State has oh, done its job, has taken the step to go beyond what the president has said them to confirm certain things from their end, 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 from other you know institutions or even from their own experiences and advice, but to limit the work of the Council of State, to limit it to just looking at the TV and the document presented, it's a bit worrying. And I think that uh, given a second chance, I believe the Council of State will probably consider my my suggestion or the suggestion being put across that they ought to go beyond the hard stuff because. You see, the constitution establishes institutions that will take care of the hard facts, the hard, you know, objective, you know, criteria. There's a, there are already institutions which can check if the person is a Ghanaian. You can check that from from maybe national identification authority or death and death. Those are, if the person is uh, those hard ones, you can confirm from other institutions. But when we rely on you for advice. We are, we are basically looking at the softer side of things, the subjective ones. You know, if you appoint this person, would, would, would Ghanaian see that the Electoral Commission is independent? If this person is working within the Electoral Commission, considering his background, do you think that will give Ghanaian the confidence that is required to trust the electoral process? Those are the questions that I believe the members of the Council of Seats are supposed to be answering. And, and again, if you look at the composition of the Council, and the people with deep experiences in both the formal and informal institutions. It is people who have influence, people who have networked, people who have established themselves across the country as people with enough knowledge about our history, our culture, our sociology, our psychology, and everything. So it is not simply a question of just another course which will look at papers and say, this is what we have to do. So I think that the Council of State could, could have taken this opportunity to... to to uh, we are still that means that their work goes beyond what the president gives them to do, and that they, they can exert some uh, deeper you know consideration of, of things than that which has been said with them. And I was mentioning, I was talking about the issue of, of facilities available to the Council of State. Indeed, it is it is true that they do not have the facilities to do thorough investigation. But they could, be, like I said, they could rely on other state institutions. Or even if they consider it as their job, they have all it takes to apply those facilities. They, they set up committees. Council of State has the capacity to set up subcommittees. They have uh, the, 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 the power to take some, uh, to set up these subcommittees to investigate and to 
give them reports which they will use in advising the president. So it should not be seen as if the Council of State is just there to do what the president expects them to do. Uh, it should be possible for the Council of State to do something which would would really put the president in the check because otherwise there's, then there will be no real point in, in, in having uh, 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 the Council of State if they, they will not go to the extent of trying to confirm independently, you know, to confirm independently from what the president has told them. Hmm. Because now at this point, uh, we have people sitting at the Electoral Commission which the largest opposition party is convinced <laughs> will not be fair to them will not contribute to a free and fair elections. Now, how do we resolve this? Because if we keep quiet, assuming that this is a new status quo, so the NDC wins power 2024, it's possible, Mr. Johnson, I said in Getia, will be the chairperson of the Electoral Commission uh, in a few years. So how do you resolve this now so that the president does not stand? Yes, so... so uh, sometimes when we talk of institutions, we seem to think that the institutions are by themselves capable of solving problems. No. Institutions by themselves don't solve problems. It is the people, the human beings, who take decisions and actions on behalf of the institutions. They, it is their, their work which makes the institutions solid, and it's their precedents that make the institutions solid. Now, if you ask me what to do next, I mean, from the letter from, from given by the Council of, you know, See, it is clear that they, they, they have washed their hands. In fact, they said they are what sanctions of issue, meaning that they have they cannot do anything about the situation. So we need to put the Council of State approach aside. Because they said they can't do the, the from the from the letter, the last paragraph, they said uh, the Council of State has become functions of issue in the process of appointment. It means that they can't do anything about this. Now there are I mean the only once the person has really been appointed, what you can do is to work in what? removing the person in accordance with law. And that is, from where I sit, I see that as a, a very tall order, even though, I mean, you can't rule that out. Now, in terms of precedent, in terms of precedent, it means that, like you said, anyone, regardless of how they have behaved, so long as they meet the objective criteria for appointment to become. So it is possible that uh, if NDC comes to power and they decide that uh, the national chairman will become, you know, the electoral commission. What it means is that there is no way or there's no precedent which will keep them from doing so because now we know that it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter the impression you create, it doesn't matter how people feel about your, your work, so long as you meet the objective criteria, then you are fit to sit in the, in the, in the, in the uh, to, to, to chair the electoral commission and conduct election, which is supposed to be free, fair, and transparent. So, um, uh, I think the president is, is, is well established that it doesn't matter what what you do, you could still get there and, and conduct the election. And I think that that must be a bit worrying to all of us. And like I said, it is a different thing if you consider all the issues you raise, and on the merits you come to the conclusion that we do not think that this issue is these issues are important and that the appointment should stand. But if you say you are not going to consider it as well, you are only going to consider the objective ones, then that is that is the outcome of it. And it means that we should be ready for similar things to happen in the future. In fact, I, I know I have to let you go uh, because we, we dragged you out of the meeting. But I, I'm, I'm also looking at the objective, the one set out by the Constitution. And it looks like all of us qualify. Uh, so yeah. I, 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 I wanted to find out from whether you think at this point, the Council, the council of State, with the kind of responses given to the NDC, is telling all of us that it is really not relevant in the appointment of a, a, a commissioner of the Electoral Commission, because we could just give it to National Security, Public Services Commission. They'll do the same job. Yeah, so... That is what goes to the relevance of the... It's not the relevance of the Council of State in this appointment and the advice. And it is not only in this appointment. See, the letter, the tone of the letter suggests that all Article 70 appointments, this is what they do. You get the point. Mm. It appears the letter is suggesting that, well, we just look at what the president gives us. If it meets the objective criteria, we are good to go. So it is not just even in, the, in, in respect of the letter commission. 
it appears in all other you know appointments the council just looks at checklist which anyone i mean which i think anyone can any institution can do like you pointed out so um electoral commission appointment is of you know the, the process for appointing electoral commission is one of the the weakest elements in our constitution okay i don't know how that happened but it is simply the president deciding that i want this person to be electoral commissioner and it goes because it is one of the offices that is not subject to parliamentary, you know, approval, and it's just appointment, you know, by the president on advice of of, 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 of the council of of state, you know. So parliament has no role to play, and, and and indeed, of course, this is not a creation of anyone who is alive today or anyone who is in government today. But it is one of the things that if you read the Constitution Review Commission report. If you read several papers presented, and I recall even working on such, such a, a project with the IEC about the dangers in the, the dangers in in the current appointment process of the electoral commission, and and it is very grave, and you would expect that. Um, uh, you know, let me make this point. You see, when constitutions make provisions, okay, they give you the broad scope, right? Why they give you the broad scope, the details are supposed to be fashioned either by practice, you know, what we usually call con con convention, either by practice or by legislation. You know, so it is possible for a president, even though the constitution doesn't require him to take the matter to parliament, a president may decide that, look, the way this thing is sensitive, let me run it through parliament and then let's see. And that would be the establishment of a president. So then it makes it difficult for future presidents to say, uh, uh, I would not, I will appoint using the raw power. And when the future president does that, it becomes a question of whether that president really cares about the, the safety of the country. Then it becomes a political question. But if we have a system where we solely rely on what the constitution says, of course, the constitution could have done better. But that doesn't mean that we should just sit down and observe I mean, use the power as the city. When all of us, and I remember very well while doing that work for IEA, it was a bipartisan, you know, IEA involved all the political parties, and everyone, God everyone God. who was present Did said, well, this is not the best. This is not the best. We need to, you know, improve upon it. So, for us to now go back from even that, so we have not just ignored the objective one. Now we are going into a situation where a hardcore party, you know, functionary would Openly be appointed and and, and 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 using the same power, then it means that we are actually going back, you know, on 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 what we, we believe we believe is supposed to be the 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 the, the, the most helpful thing for the for the for the for our democracy. So it is really a problem, and if that is not taken, and you know how elect the role that elections play, the, the elections you know play in our in our in our democracy. In fact, on on so many occasions, the Supreme Court has said that. The core of every elect, every democracy, that is the basic, the bedrock of every democracy, is the right to vote and election. So, if we begin even pumping or depreciating the quality of what we call the electoral commission and what its work is about, then it means that we are we are ready to to actually you know uh, destroy the democracy itself. You know. So I think that it could have been, even if we are not going to subject to parliamentary approval, when such concerns are raised, and these are significant concerns, and I think that a, a, a listening president or a president who is willing to enhance the democratic experiment of Ghana should take note of that and, and advise himself that, look, this is too, you know, egregious. We need to, to, to find a way of reaching a, a, a certain, you know, a, 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 a middle ground. Of course, we are not we are not naive. No one here in this country is saying that when a president is giving power to appoint in the manner in which the constitution provides for the electoral commissioner, they should go for a, 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 an opposition party. No one, everyone knows that definitely the president will appoint someone that he feels comfortable God. with, someone that Radio is gold. likely to work, you know, in, in his direction. That is something that even the premise of the constitution will know. Everyone knows that. But what I think no, nobody in this is the, the, the situation where you go for someone that everyone knows that 
has demonstrated in the past that for him is totally for this side and he's not going to even listen to whatever the other side is doing. That is a serious, a serious matter which we need to, to, to be concerned about. Doc, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, my brother. Hmm. And um, have a blessed day. You too. You too. Uh, Dr. Justice Remsai speaking to us. It's a lot like... Uh,